Okay, we're looking at the uh, origin of the Palestinians. So there are many people that are not aware uh, of where the Palestinians came from. They're not aware that Palestinians came into existence in one day. Uh, Walid Shubat, uh, who was a former PLO terrorist, uh, made a statement that uh, acknowledged that he was fighting for a lie and that he was fighting against the truth. He stated, why is it that on June 4th, 1967, I was a Jordanian and overnight I became a Palestinian? So we do not particularly mind Jordanian rule. The teaching of the destruction of Israel was a definite part of the curriculum. Uh, but uh, we considered ourselves Jordanian until the Jews returned to Jerusalem. Uh, then all of a sudden, we were Palestinians. They removed the star from the Jordanian flag, and all at once, we had a Palestinian flag. Uh, when I finally realized the, the lies and the myths I was taught, it was my duty as a righteous person to speak out. And uh, as we go on here, uh, I, I just want to say this is an extremely long article, but uh, uh, I'm just uh, uh, doing a short version of it, so there's a lot of things left out. In reality, though, there is no such people, culture, language, nor history of Palestinians. Uh, it should be noted that there was has never been a Palestinian state, nor a Palestinian archaeological find, nor coinage. And the Palestinians we see today are Arabs, uh, with their culture, language, and history. So the Muslims are trying to say that Jesus was a Palestinian. Uh, they're trying to wipe out not only the Jews from Israel, but also Jesus Christ, who was born a Jew. And Palestinians are not uh, just from Jordan, but Syria, uh, Yemen, Saudi Arabia, uh, Iraq, and Egypt. They claim to be from the ancient Canaanites, and according to the Bible, that is not true. Uh, look at uh, Genesis chapter 12, verse 7. It says, The Lord appeared to Abraham and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So God here is, uh, uh, promises to give Canaan to Abraham's descendants. Uh, and then look at Genesis chapter 13, verse 15. It says, uh, For all the land that you see, I will give to you and your offspring forever. And uh, that forever has never been changed, neither. And God affirms his promises to give uh, Canaan to uh, Abraham's descendants. And uh, in 1929, the Arabs uh, spread false rumors about the Jews and began a battle with them. Uh, there had been a presence of Jews in Hebron for 2,000 years, and many of the Jews were murdered. And in uh, 1936, the Arabs uh, attacked the Jewish farming communities and, and murdered civilian Jews and destroyed livestock and crops. And the British uh, armed about 3,000 Jewish guards uh, that were able to partially defend some settlements against the Arabs. Um, in 1937, Arabs uh, renewed their attack on Jewish settlements, murdering civilians. Uh, in 1938, the Jews instituted a more offensive strategy and inflicted heavy losses on the Arabs. Uh, the revolt ended in 1939. And then in uh, 1939, with the coming war with Germany, the Jews had to take sides with Britain or with Germany. And they stood with Britain in World War II, and they sent soldiers to fight with Germany. Uh, I mean, uh, to fight with the Allies. Uh, the Palestinian Arabs supported the Nazis. And the Muslim Mufta of Jerusalem uh, made several trips to Berlin uh, to try and persuade the Nazis to expand their extermination of Jews to those in Palestine. Uh, so Israeli Prime Minister David Ben-Gurion declared the establishment of a new Jewish Republic of Israel on May 14, 1948. And the next day, Egypt, Jordan, Lebanon, Iraq, Syria invaded Israel. At the end of the war, Israel controlled about 40% more of the land than was proposed by the UN partition plan. Um, 
Egypt occupied the Gaza Strip and Jordan the West Bank, and the Arabs still refuse to recognize Israel and still want to exterminate them today. That has never changed. And then uh, uh, while this fighting was going on, uh, thousands of Arabs fled from the areas controlled by Israel, and over 200,000 Arabs stayed in Israel and became citizens. And while Israel was taking in Arabs, the Arab, the Arab countries did not take in Arab refugees of the war. In other words, those that were there fighting, uh, the, the Arabian countries refused to allow them to come back home. They wanted them to stay in, uh, 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 in Palestine. Uh, to help them uh, attack Israel, to exterminate Israel. They were left in refugee camps uh, to help in the continuing fight against Israel. And these are the so-called Palestinian people. There has never been a Palestinian people. And the purpose of these Arab refugees and the other Arabs is to annihilate Israel uh, and the Jews, for that matter, all Jews. And since 1948, there have been many peace plans offered and all rejected by the Arabs. The Arabs uh, have continually attacked uh, Jewish civilians and targeted Israel down to this day. And, uh, there, and the purpose of these uh, Arab refugees and the other Arabs is and always has been to destroy Israel. Uh, then in 1967, there was a six-day war. Uh, and Israel defeated the coalition of nine uh, Arab states to uh, legitimate possession of Judea and Samaria. The Arab uh, dwellers in those regions then discovered they were Palestinians, which they did not know the day before. Walid Shubat, an ex-Palestinian terrorist who is uh, uh, turned away from that, uh, stated, as I lived in Palestine, everyone I knew could trace their heritage back to the original country their great uh, grandparents came from. Uh, everyone knew their origin was not from the Canaanites, but ironically, this is the kind of stuff our education in the Middle East included. Uh, the fact is that today's Palestinians and immigrants um, from the surrounding nations. Um, they are immigrants from the surrounding nations. Um, says, I grew up well knowing the history and origin of today's Palestinians uh, as being from Yemen, Saudi Arabia, Morocco, Christians from Greece, Muslims, Shirkas from Russia, Muslims from Bosnia, and the Jordanians next door. My grandfather who was a dignitary in Bethlehem, almost lost his life by... Uh, Abdul Qadar al Husseini, the leader of the Palestinian Revolution, uh, after being accused of selling land to the Jews. He used to tell us that his village was Beit Sahur. Excuse me if I'm not saying these names right. Uh, but the Shepherdsville is what that means. In Bethlehem County, was empty before his father settled in the area with six other families. The town has now grown to 30,000 inhabitants. And then there's the Syrian uh, uh, dictator, <clears throat> Afez Assad, <clears throat> speaking to the PLO leader, Yasser Arafat. And he stated, you do not represent, you as uh, Yasser Arafat, you do not represent Palestine as much as we do. Never forget this one point. There is no such thing as a Palestinian people. There is no Palestinian entity. There is only Syria. You are an integral part of the Syrian people. Palestine is an integral part of Syria. Therefore, it is we, the Syrian authorities, who are the true representatives of the Palestinian people. So, in the end, we see that uh, the entire purpose of these uh, Arabs are, uh, has always been... Well, uh, the Arabs from the surrounding countries uh, of Palestine uh, that call themselves Palestinians has always been uh, the annihilation of Israel and all Jews. 
And, and sadly, this is still true today. Thank you for listening.